All right, guys, we're back on the Cool Hub project. Uh, like I said, this is my 2009 uh, Ranger boat. Like I said, I'm on, working on the trailer. I'm replacing the brakes, I'm replacing the bearings, and I'm replacing the seals. Uh, like I said, this boat is uh, going on 12 years old, so, and I have never replaced any of those seals or bearings, and I think it's just time for it because uh, I had a problem with one or two of the uh, seals leaking and I decided just to go ahead and change everything. Uh, I've been waiting on parts for about two weeks and they finally showed up so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, if you remember in my last video I uh, took this brake assembly apart right here with all the bearings and everything. I already replaced that because I had it apart. Uh, and this one right here it has the actual grease zerk in the front where you can pump grease in and I had this hub replaced about two years ago so that's why that was different but the brakes the seals and the bearings are the same uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start with taking this one off and getting the uh, seals and the brakes not yeah and the brakes and the uh, bearings re replaced in this one first and uh, then I go to the other side and I show you one of those that has the cool hub uh, deal on it so let's get this wheel off first and get started. Okay, to get everything apart, uh, this is just like a car. It has two slide pins, one at the top and one at the bottom. Uh, we had to take those off to get the caliber off. Uh, then we had to come to the front and take the uh, uh, Carter pin out and the castle nut and that whole um, brake rotor will come off with the seals and the bearings inside of it. So we're going to start by getting these uh, slide pins out. Uh, this is what the pin looks like. Uh, this one's not too bad. It doesn't have any rust or anything on it so uh, we'll clean it up when we put it back in and put some grease on it. Uh, this is the other pin. They, they are the same, so it doesn't matter which one goes at the top, which one goes at the bottom. Like I said, now we can get the uh, caliber off. It does have uh, a little tension on the, uh, on the, on the uh, rotor, so see if we can just get the pressure off of it and it will come off it's at the top here so let's try to get the, the outside one off first uh, that's the outside one's got a little clip on it too uh, that's going to make me have to uh, get my C clamp and push that back before I can get that off. But that's not a big deal. We need to push that uh, plunger back anyway so this is just a step before I would normally do it. And to let you know, I did go up in the front and take my uh, brake fluid reservoir cap and I loosened it. I really took it off, but I just put it on top for any of that fluid. It will go back into the reservoir and not try to push that cap off. Okay, now that I got that pushed back, maybe it'll let me get it off now. And it did so like I said that's the little clips that's holding in there and the problem with like I said my brakes are wearing you can see that that groove that's on that brake pad there so it's about time to change these 
So next, we want to try to get this cotter pin out the way. We want to try to take care of this because we're going to reuse it. So, as you can see, it doesn't take much to get this castle bolt off because it's not supposed to be super tight anyway. But we got a castle nut. We got a washer behind it. I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit before you can see what I'm talking about. Then we like to say we got a washer. It's good as everything's good and oily, so it means it's doing its job. So we just got a washer. And then behind the washer we got the first set of bearings and and the only well it's not the only way, but I'm just gonna pull it off. That way it'll come pulling it, it'll fall on out. And like I said, we're going to replace this bearing, so uh, it's not a big deal. Then if we pull it all the way off, we can see the back side has a, it has a different kind of little deal on the back here. Looks like it's protecting the seal because the seal is inside. Uh, but we'll go to the bench and look for that. at this. Alright, now that we're at the bench... Uh, tell you the truth, I have never seen one of these on. Uh, like I said, this is the one that's been replaced before, so this is something different. Looks like just a uh, a protective little cap or something. I don't know exactly what that is, but we'll put it back on there. Uh, like I said, right here is the actual seal, and. We got to get that off to uh, get to the bearing that's behind that. So I got my trusty seal puller. See if we can get that off. I guess the best method for that is just pulling on it instead of beating on it. Uh, but that's the old seal. Throw that in trash for it gets everything oily and greasy. And this is the uh, back set of, set of bearings here. Uh, like I said, these are the new set. And this is the old set. And I'm going to throw that in the trash too because... I don't see me reusing that. And I'm just going to clean around the edge here. I'm not going to remove any of that oil in there because I'm going to put it right back on the boat. And and that oil is still good. It's not been leaking or anything like that. Uh, and the new set of bearings. I'm going to get some grease and we're going to grease these up. Uh, I'm going to lightly grease these uh, this bearing up just because I know I should do that. Uh, I got some of the uh, red tacky. Uh, that's some good grease. It's real sticky. And I've been using it for years. And that little container has been lasting me for a long time. Uh, I don't want to put too terribly much in there because they two different oils. But uh, I don't want it to be dry. And what, what I'm trying to do is push that all in this in this little crease here, little cavity by just pushing down on my hand and and turn it and pushing down turn it I'm gonna just rub my finger on the race that's in here that this barren roll on just to make sure there's no nicks or anything that's would tear this barren up and I'm just gonna drop it back in there now that we got that in uh, this is the new seal, and this is what they call a triple seal. It's got, I don't, I'm pretty sure you guys can't see that. But it's a triple ring around the inside of this. Uh, a lot of them is double. This one's actually triple. So hopefully that means better. So I'm just going to put that, try to get it started by hand. And I'm going to take my trusty little mallet.
Come on, seal. Don't be difficult. I can almost push it in there with my hand. Y'all not jumping too bad. All right, so we got that in there. I'm just going to get a little bit of that grease in there and just rub around the inner side of that seal just to make sure we got a little grease on there when we put it back in there. And uh, we're going to put the little dust cap back on it, wherever that is. Then we're going to flip it over. Uh, I'm not going to put the new front seal in, not seal, but bearing in, until I get back out at the boat. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and grease it up some just to get that part out the way. Alright guys, we'll meet you back at the boat. So now that we got that cleaned off, we can put this caliber back with the bearing and everything in it. And then we want to slip the uh, front bearing in. So we're just going to place that in there. Trying to hold everything together so we can get our washer. Because everything wants to slide out without the nut on it. Then the castle nut. Still trying to keep tension on the back part of it, keep everything slid to the back. Some people say you need a little drag on this nut. You don't want to tighten it too much, but you want to tighten it until you can feel the the actual cal not caliper, but the actual uh, rotor have a little resistance to it. That's what I believe, but some people say you just need it on there tight enough to keep everything together. But you don't want it to have any rock back and forth, any kind of play in it. Uh, I'm just looking for the uh, Carter pin hole. That's one thing you got to line up. This part is just feel. Uh, I haven't, well, I haven't looked for any, but I haven't never seen anybody talk about a. Uh, a torque setting on that bolt because like I said you can unloosen it with your hand uh, so you don't want too much pressure pushing on those bearings now I'm gonna get my Carter pin reinstall that And uh, we're basically done with that part of it, replacing the bearings and seals. Now we got to replace the brakes. Okay, this is the new set of brakes, nice ceramic brakes. And uh, we just need to pop them into the actual caliber here. Uh, make sure you see it's got a crown on it. And you want your uh, brakes to match the roundness of the top of the caliber. So I'm going to put this back one in first because... It gave me trouble about coming out last. Then this one here, the outside one, uh, like I said, it's got the little clip too with the little hangers on the top. You want to put the clip inside. Here, which is kind of tricky. Okay, that, this part right here just got to rest on these two top pin, not not pins, but little little ledges here. Hope you guys see that. So that's in there right now. So we're gonna just because we pushed the uh, plunger back in when we took the uh, brakes off. So. We don't have to do that step now, so that would be the next step if you didn't do that. We 
going to see if that'll hold right there before we can get the uh, slide pins together. Uh, what I have here is just some uh, brake grease that's in this little pack here. And I'm going to squeeze out some on this pin. And I just want to sl slob it on there. That's the word for the day, slob. And I did put some red Loctite on the top of the uh, threads here. You don't want this bolt to back out because your brakes fall off. So we're just going to put that back in there and see if we can get a tighten back up. We want to go until she stops and put a little uh on the end of it. Uh, we're just going to do the next one the same way. Just put a little grease on it. Alright, so we're done with the brakes. We're done with the uh, seals, replacing the bearings. And the only thing I got left for this one is to... Uh, pump grease into it. Uh, I'm going to go to the other side and do the other side and I just want to show you the uh, the cool hub portion of the other side. Like I said, the brakes are the same. Uh, the bearings are the same. Uh, the only thing different from this one and the other ones, uh, you have to put uh, gear oil in the front here instead of just pumping grease in the greaser. So, uh, when I get over there, I'll show you that part. Alright, I told you I was going to bring you back when I do one of the uh, cool hubs on the other side of the boat here. Uh, I got all the brakes changed all the way around. Uh, this is my last one I'm going to do, I need to do. Uh, all we got to do is just put the cap on. The cap just screws on. And, and let me take this back off and show you. And this cap does have a uh, gasket around it. So you want to be able to put this cap on tight enough to get that gasket to actually uh, compress. So I just got a big pair of pliers and my screwdriver here. My pliers are not open far enough. You want to get that on there pretty tight without cracking it. So, uh, like I said, that gasket you want it to compress for it won't leak. And now that we got that on, we got to take the plug off the front here. I just got a screwdriver and uh, want to pop that plug out the front. Uh, believe it or not, I have people in other videos talk about. The uh, cool hubs you feel from the side. Some cool hubs have a fill or drain plug on the uh, top side of the uh, uh, caliber, but mine doesn't. I, I just want to show you guys that so I won't get that coming again. So there's no way other than the front here to actually feel this, uh, this hub. So. I'm not going to tell you what kind of oil to put in. I, this is 90, 80, 90 uh, gear oil. Uh, you have to do the research on your own. I don't want to say uh, what oil to use and you guys use it and something happens. So, uh, what I did, what I do is I put some, some oil in there. Um, then I just spin it around a couple times, spin it around. I'm trying to get this oil to work all the way back to the back bearing. And it's going to take a while. You're going to have to do this probably four or five times over the next day or two. Uh, especially if it's cool outside and your oil has been in your garage or somewhere where it's cool. You take your oil in the house you know, the day before for it to stay warm for the uh, flow real good. 
So as you can see, it's something trying to come out. And I'm going to fill it up as far as I can get it. And I'm going to halfway put the plug in there. Then I'm going to try to fill as much as possible without getting it to spill all over the place. Then I'm going to put the plug back in. Then I'm just going to spin it around, just trying to get that oil to work to the back. Like I said, in another 10 minutes or so, I'll come by and put some more in there and do the same thing. But you're going to have to do that several times over the next day or two for that, for that whole reservoir. You want that reservoir forward or, you know, halfway, at least halfway. Uh, but I'd rather have more than not enough. So, like I said, I will next 10 minutes or so I will come back and pull that plug out halfway not all the way out just just halfway and put some more in it and just like I said do that over the next day or two for you to have enough oil in there because there's no way other than doing it this way to figure out how much oil you have in there so that's pretty much just the way I do it. Like I said, uh, I've done them all that way except for the one over there that has the actual uh, grease zerk on the front of it. But other than that, without putting the wheels back on, I'm done. So, all right, guys, we're done. Uh, like I said, I got all the brakes all the way around. Got the bearings changed, the seals in, and... Like I said, the process of putting oil in these cool hubs will be over the next day or two. Uh, other than that, if you might have to bleed your brakes. Uh, I don't think you will. If you didn't take any air line, uh, brake lines loose, uh, you shouldn't have to. But if you do, uh, that'll probably be another video or you do your research on that. Uh, but like I said, with these dual axle trailers, you have four brake calibers, but you only have one bleed screw, and that's on this tire right here. The rest of them, you bleed them from this one caliber right here. So, other than that, guys, I believe I don't got anything else. Uh, like I said, I'm just getting ready for the fishing season coming up here soon. Uh, like I said, I got my carport modified so I can get my boat in here the right way. And... I guess my next video, so I'm trying to come up with different way of storing soft plastics in my boat. So that might be another video down the road here soon. But other than that, guys, if you hadn't subscribed, please do. Like I said, it always helps. Uh, believe me, if if everybody that watched the video subscribe, I'd be doing well. Other than that, guys, I'm going to be out of here. Thanks for watching.